you joining us for the first time. Cultural Vistas is an international exchange organization and in normal travel years we arrange and sponsor more than 6,000 international exchanges a year. Traditionally, we work with more than 1,000 different host companies all across the United States, focusing on experiential learning opportunities. So today's forum was created for companies who host international interns on professional exchange programs that have converted to virtual formats or companies that are considering hosting interns virtually. The purpose of today's webinar is to look at the future of virtual work from a high level perspective. We want to share best practices on getting set up in a virtual internship experience, supporting your interns in the best ways possible, and designing a program that will be impactful for both the intern and the organization. So we will start with the kickoff discussion in just a moment, but before we do, a couple of housekeeping notes. We are in a meeting setting and we will keep you muted during the main session until Q&A. And that during the Q&A session, if we call your name, we would like you to unmute and ask it. If you'd prefer, you can also ask the question directly in the chat. We'll remind you of these instructions later as well. We will break out into two sessions, and this has been determined by the information you have provided during registration. But we will record both sessions and make the recordings, uh, make the recordings public. At the end of the forum, we will have a calendar link available for those who would like additional time with Cultural Vista staff to ask questions for a 15 minute one on one meeting. This is a great way for us to provide you direct answers to your questions for your specific organization. As always, please be patient with our tech issues and send a note in the chat if we can help. We're happy to try our best. So without further ado, it's now my sincere honor to introduce T.A. Jung, Vice President of Global Integration. T.H. has strong content expertise and wide global experience in creating highly engaging workshops and client relationships. T.H. was born and raised in Singapore and has lived and worked in numerous cities in the U.S. as well as across Asia Pacific region. Global Integration is an expert in training in remote and virtual teams, matrix management, and agile and digital leadership to companies in our increasingly connected workforce. So welcome, TH. Thank you for joining us. Hey, hi, Elizabeth. An honor and a pleasure to be here always to chat with you. So TH, to start off today, I have maybe an easier question. We'll get a little harder as we go. If you're an organization who has hosted interns in the past, but maybe you're on the fence deciding whether to host a remote intern because you think it may be a lot of work to supervise. What are ways you can streamline this process? And what excites you most about this new way of working? Um, I'll answer um, straight and, and accurate as you know me. Uh, by training and education, I'm a chemical engineer. So I like to say I start off with the facts first and I'll explain the data. So um, I like the way you, you phrase it and thinking that how could you make it easier and streamlining. I will be lying to you if I say it's going to be easy. Um, I think it's going to be different which means the effort that you put in in a face-to-face -face kind of um, internship or for that matter, any kind of face-to-face -face work relationship is going to be slightly transformed into a virtual one. So I don't know if easy and difficult, it's a relative, but I think it requires intention and attention. And that links to what your second part of your question is, which is how do, you, how do we see this? And I, I will again say, how should we see this as we look at virtual remote way of working? I'm sure all of us, all of you sitting today with, with us uh, right now have heard this uh, numerous times that over the last 12 months to 18 months, uh, what has happened is only a catalyst an accelerator of what has already been working in the background. And uh, pardon my language, I always say, we just all got a kick in the, you know what, to move a little bit faster to join what we at Global Integration has known for about 24, 25 years, that remote virtual working is 
going to be part, and I won't say all, but it's going to be part. I think that's the trend that we are seeing, and that's the trend that we are uh, uh, hearing from our clients working all around the world in different industries. And it is no um, uh, uh, easy thing to say that it's just the wave of the future, but I think it is going to be a hybrid, which is some things are gonna be done face-to-face, some things are going to be done virtual and remote, and we have to re-engineer, reshape the workplace, the culture, the way of working to fit into that new world, the hybrid world. So to think about for your, um, the organizations that you're partnering with, to think about hosting virtual um, internship, I think it's um, a sooner later, but is now sooner, kind of um, uh, decision. And it's not only internship, I'm pretty sure looking through the client list and the the partnership list that you have, uh, a lot of them are thinking about for their own quote unquote regular workforce. So I think the future is here. Uh, It's not gonna be back to normal, whatever that means now to all of us, but is gonna be, I call it, we're gonna be going back to the future that we already were moving towards. That's exactly what I'm hearing too, TH. And and I I love hearing your feedback because when you put together the pieces anecdotally, that is really what the groups of, of organizations and companies are saying. So if we believe that there will always be a virtual component, are there ways you believe a virtual internship can be made to complement in-person internships? If so, how do you structure this? Well, I think it's always going to be um, a compliment if you structure it um, the right way. And I use right in quotation marks because right may be very different um, between industries, between different companies. And I think there should be the intention part. So I mentioned a little bit early on, there should be done more with intention and then attention to the details. So first of all, get clear about what the intention of that internship is. Now in a face-to-face internship, I think, and again, I hope I don't get um, virtual things thrown at me, um, but I would say in a face-to-face internship, there is a lot more room for you to shape and mold as you work through an internship. But then uh, for a virtual, for the fact that you're relying on technology uh, to communicate, your frequency of contact is gonna be fewer. Both sides, both the intern and the hosting organization, both need to think through very clearly what's the outcome, what aspect of it. I do understand that the the basis, it's cultural exchanges, it's understanding uh, cultures. But beyond that, how is that going to be um, uh, uh, facilitated? Because the the shape and form that it takes will need to be a little bit clearer upfront. So in terms of structuring it, the attention of the details might be reestablishing expectations around the frequency of contact, the type of contact that works for both sides when you're now possibly spanning a greater uh, time zone difference that you may otherwise be working with. So that's just one example of the intention and attention and what aspects of this. I'm sure a lot of your host organizations here, they have gone through um, face-to-face structuring and, and, and design of it All I think it needs to be done is to look through it, be a little bit more um, attentive to the next few layers because we cannot rely on the face-to-face sensing. I call it the shaping and molding through osmosis. (laughs) Yes, and I've heard you use that term before with osmosis. And and I might, this leads to my next question. When we've chatted in the past, you've said that I shouldn't compare apples to apples when you have in-person work with virtual work. So for example, meeting experiences and participation will not always be the same. And we see this even from today's webinar. But what are other examples, perhaps such as work hours, availability, cultural integration, should supervisors be prepared to present to their interns differently? So you've hired a new intern and you're sitting down to have that meeting. 
what type of conversation should you have about the differences of remote and in-person work? Um, fantastic, because this gives me an opportunity um, to share one of, um, one of the tools or skills that I firmly believe in, no matter who you are when you're working remotely virtually, whether it's an intern or even as uh, what I would call a regular working remote and virtual relationship, is what we would call establishing a community level agreement. And I think it's very important because when we have that face-to-face -face component as the cornerstone of any working partnership, it's easy to kind of fine tune our um, a cadence, our expectations through just walking around, sensing it. We call it management by walking around and we call it, you know, kind of from the corner of your eye, from the kind of the earshot, we fine tune that way. But then when you're working with an intern for, uh, for that matter, for anyone um, remotely and virtually, those needs to be done upfront rather than focusing on what the task and the project is, which I'm sure any sponsor, any host, any good manager will have spent a lot of time thinking through what both parties would get out of from the task point of view. Now you need to also pay equal attention, if not more attention to the, what we would call how we are gonna get through this internship on the community level. The examples that you've given, um, how often should we meet? Um, should we meet through Zoom or would a, a phone call be much more uh, appropriate because of the focus of the attention? Um, what should we be, what time zone, time window would work best for both? Um, how often should we have a feedback session on progress? on give each other a sense of what's working, what's not working, should we do differently? Again, my focus here is not the task because all we are very trained in focusing on task planning, but how are we gonna partner and have this dance virtually? So building this community level agreement is important. And the kicker is most managers will tend to think, what should I be talking and telling the intern about? But what I think is most important is to have a two-way conversation. The, the reality is, and I'm, again, I hope that I'm not going to get some uh, rotten tomatoes virtually, but I think when you talk about internship, you're dealing with a lot of population that is what we in the business call digital natives. These are folks who have been so savvy working remotely and virtually that um, it is in their DNA, in their bloodstream. For some of the hosting managers, again, I may be giving, dating myself and giving myself away. Uh, we are native, uh, we're not digital natives, but we are what we would call digital migrants. So there might be blind spots on either side that we're not focusing on how we could make this virtual partnership, working relationship work and be at the next level. So I think um, for that communication to start is to start off by asking the key question, what should we talk about in order to make this internship work better? Again, not to focus on the task, but how the communication, the decision-making, uh, the feedback, um, and the community that we expect and have individual thoughts and then get together and build some agreement. I think that is um, a different approach that perhaps to some very traditional conventional legacy practices. I agree, TH. It, it's a more uh, intentional approach, and I think it just will help both the company and the intern or regular worker just so much smoother through this, this new experience. Well, so I'm actually going to go ahead and take a question from the audience, and this question is, how do you recommend companies help their employees and interns find balance in this new virtual world? So you know, now individuals are taking phone calls later hours, different time periods, and there's a real burnout with Zoom meetings and virtual meetings. So how, how does one as a supervisor help their staff through that transition? 
I think one of the um, uh, one of the keys, of course, there's so many different aspects of it, and I hate this part of it because it sounds like I'm dispensing quick magic pills to everyone, everywhere, on everything. Uh, I'm just going to share a couple of what I would call philosophy and principle, and it needs to be adapted and adopted in different ways. So the first principle that I think we need to kind of retune and recalibrate the mindset is it's not a one size fits all. And do not have this guilt in you or the intern himself or herself having that guilt of saying, if I do this, we have to do it for everyone. That links back to what you were uh, opening up um, early on with about our conversation talking about you cannot create the same experience and neither should you. So that's the first thing is to release yourself from saying, if I do this, I have to do it for everyone. Or if I do this, I have to do it all the time throughout the six months or eight months or six weeks or 60 weeks. So relieve yourself from that and build that agreement and be able to tune it. Give yourself the permission to tune it. So the second principle that I will share in terms of making it work and striking the balance is that do not make assumptions as far as the preferences. So examples that um, we oftentimes give would be, well, if I'm a digital migrant, I would say, well, well, we have regular working hours. So it's bad to have conversations outside of those because I'm gonna be very considerate. If I'm a digital native, I may think that, hey, I'm on 24 hours a day, whether with you or not. And there might be windows that as absolutely different um, by different demographics that I would be wanting and feel comfortable totally to have a conversation to work. So I think um, releasing yourself from that there is a one size fits all may create more opportunity and creativity around making what seemingly is a, a, a more difficult um, a virtual working relationship work even better because you can have more opportunities, more windows, but the key is how do you get that mutual conversation to work? What great advice, TH. Thank you. I've got one more question from the audience, if you have time for us. Sure, um, always. So what is the best investment for a company to make looking to transition to virtual internship programs or into virtual project-based collaboration? So if you're starting to get into this space or you want to be more intentional, what's the best investment the company can make? I think... Um, <laughs> Sorry if I'm going to wear my uh, consultant hat. Um, consultants, we love models. You know that. Um, some of you even pay us for those models. So I'm going to drop a little model in response to that question that you just posed, is that if you're putting an investment, there are only four things that most organizations will invest in. Um, strategy, structure, systems, and skills and behaviors. So those are the four areas that most managers organization will say, where do I put my attention, whether it's resources, time, money, and people. So your question is, where should I focus on? My observation experience is most organizations, whether it's limited to internship or the greater management leadership philosophy, is that we have spent a lot of time, money, and people on strategy, structure, and systems. So that's been taken care of. That's an assumption. Call me naive. That's enough attention on those three. But I would invest in changing the behaviors, the skill set to fit into this um, new way. I use new again in a very cliche, passe word. Uh, this new way of working, which is remote and virtual. It's not about just having the technology to connect and Zoom is not about just emailing, is not about replicating, is about a change of mindset and heart set and create a new way of working. So that's where I would spend time, both in the hosting organization and creating the uh, skill set and the interns um, uh, end of the equation. It wouldn't have been an obvious answer to me, TH, but you're so right. Now that I've thought through the process, this is exactly what the companies need to be thinking of first. So thank you, TH, for your time today. It's just, it's been such a delight to talk to you as always.
So before we get into breakouts, I want to let everyone know that both sessions will be recorded. And in addition, after the sessions, you will receive additional resources. TH has created some, and some of the panelists have also provided additional resources that we will provide to you in a follow-up. We also want to remind you that you're welcome to sign up for a 15-minute consultation after this through a Calendarly link that you will receive. So now to the breakout groups. Each of our speakers has a different area of expertise that they're to share, and we hope that you learn a lot just by hearing from them directly. So to lead these discussions, my colleagues Nancy Ongstad and Keenan Couture will moderate. They will work with our internship placement programs and co companies directly in these international exchanges, and they'll be able to contribute to the discussions. So enjoy. Okay, it looks like everyone is back in the room and I, I want to just wrap up by saying thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I hope it was as informative to you as it was to me. I know I've taken many notes and I, I have lots of brainstorming to do from all of the information I learned from our speakers today. I also want to express my gratitude to the speakers and panelists for spending their time and expertise with us. And please be on the lookout for future invites from Cultural Vistas about webinars on various topics. And you will be receiving a follow-up um, communication from us that will have slides and other um, information provided by our speakers today and the ability to sign up for a 15-minute consultation through a calendarly invite. So thank you again. I hope you have a great evening, afternoon, morning. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.